There in the garden of tears, my heavy load he chose to bear. His heart with sorrow was torn. Yet not my will, but yours, he said. This is our God, the servant king. He calls us now to follow him, to bring our lives as a daily offering of worship to the servant king. I am spent and utterly crushed. I cry aloud in anguish of heart. A reading from Luke 22. Jesus knelt down and prayed, Father, if you are willing, take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, let your will be done, not mine. Then an angel appeared to him, coming from heaven to give him strength. In his anguish, he prayed even more earnestly, and his sweat fell to the ground like great drops of blood. No wonder you prayed in the garden, take this cup away from me. This cup of suffering that humanity has inflicted on itself by turning away from you, persecution, destruction, injustice, calumny, war, pride, abuse. This burden that weighs you down, this weight that is crushing you. Can you drink the cup that I am going to drink? You asked those disciples who wanted to sit with you in your kingdom. And today you ask us that same question. Are we prepared to accept whatever comes to us in your name as we strive to bring about your kingdom here on earth? Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Father, hear the prayer we offer, not for ease that prayer shall be, but for strength that we may ever live our lives courageously. Be our strength in hours of weakness, in our wanderings be our guide. Through endeavour, failure, danger, Father, be thou at our side. I bear shame and insult. Because of your name. A reading from John 15. Jesus said, if the world hates you, you must realise that it hated me before it hated you. If you belong to the world, the world would love you as its own. But because you do not belong to the world, because my choice of you has drawn you out of the world, that is why the world hates you. If they persecuted me, they will persecute, persecute you too. If they kept my word, they will keep yours as well. But it will be on my account that they will do all, do all this to you because they do not know the one who sent me. Meditation. Innocent, you heard yourself condemned. We hear of people locked up for years for crimes they did not commit. We know of prisoners of conscience punished for their political or religious views. I wonder where we would stand if we faced trial for our faith in you. As someone said, would there be sufficient, sufficient evidence to convict us? Are we known and seen to be Christians, not just when we are in church, but in our homes, our workplace, among our friends? Or do we avoid owning up to being your disciples for fear of ridicule or abuse? If we do, are we not as guilty as Pilate, who was willing to deny the truth for the sake of an easy life? Blessed are you when people abuse you and persecute you. Your reward will be great in heaven. A purple robe, a crown of thorns, a reed in his right hand. Before the soldier's spite and scorn, I see my saviour stand. 
he bears between the Roman guards the weight of all our woe. A stumbling figure, bowed and scarred, I see my saviour go. The proud have risen against me. Brutal gangs seek my life. Pilate then had Jesus taken away and scourged. And after this, the soldiers twisted some thorns into a crown and put it on his head and dressed him in a purple robe. They kept coming up to him and saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and slapping him in the face. What can we tell you about bullying, Lord? You have been a victim of it yourself. As if being condemned to death was not enough, the soldiers dressed you in kingly robes and put a crown of thorns on your head and mocked you. Yet still we bully one another in school, at work, in our families, even in your church. It may not be as open as what the guards did to you, but however subtle, it is still bullying. Blessed are you when people speak all kinds of calumny against you. Your reward will be great in heaven. Peace is the gift of heaven to earth, softly enfolding our fears. Peace is the gift of Christ to the world given for us. He is the lamb who bore the pain of peace. Peace is the gift of Christ to his church, wound of the lance of his love. Love is the pain he suffered for man, offered to us. Oh, to accept the wound that brings us peace. Mercy and faithfulness meet. Justice and peace embrace. Scripture reading from Colossians 1. Christ is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he should be supreme in every way, because God wanted all fullness to be found in him and through him to reconcile all things to him. Everything in heaven and everything on earth by making peace through his death on the cross. A meditation. Christ is our peace. We say this readily enough at the Eucharist as we prepare to share the peace. But here we see what that peace cost you. You could have called on your father to send 10 legions of angels to save you from arrest but you knew that was not the way. You knew this and told your disciples to put away their swords. You knew that violence only leads to violence, that war only leads to more war. Peace without justice is no peace worth having, but fighting is no way to bring about peace. Blessed are the colleges. They shall be called the sons of God. Look around you. Can you see? Times are troubled. People grieve. See the violence. Feel the hardness. All my people weep with me. Kiri eleison. Christi eleison. Kiri eleison. Forgive us, Father, hear our prayer. We'll walk with you anywhere. Through your suffering with forgiveness, take your life into the world. Lord, I take refuge in you. Save me from those who attack me. A reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 4. It seems to me that God has put us apostles on show right at the end, like man condemned to death. Here we are, fools for Christ's sake. To this day, we go short of food and drink and clothes. 
We are beaten up and we have no homes. When we are cursed, we answer with a blessing. When we are hounded, we endure it passively. When we are insulted, we give a courteous answer. We are treated even now as the dregs of the world, the very lowest scum. A meditation. Over the years, there have been many martyrs for the Christian faith. And even today, people are persecuted because of their faith in you. But what hope is there when even the different religions cannot live together in peace? Look at the land of your earthly life, the so-called holy land. Worse still, even Christians cannot always live together in peace. And what about our own churches, with their fractions and power struggles? Things haven't changed much in 2000 years. You know what it is to be persecuted in the cause of right. And here you fall under its weight. Blessed are those who are persecuted for the cause of right. Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Brother, sister, let me serve you. Let me be as Christ to you. Pray that I may have the grace to let you be my servant too. We are pilgrims on a journey, fellow travellers on the road. We are here to help each other, walk the mile and bear the load. Show your goodness to those who do good. To those whose hearts are true. A reading from the book of Matthew. Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? When did we see you a stranger and make you welcome, lacking clothes and clothe you? When did we find you sick or in prison and go and see you? And the king will answer, in truth I tell you, in so far as you did this to the least of my brothers, you did it to me. A meditation. Simon showed you mercy, Lord, unwillingly perhaps, but he did shoulder your cross and help you on your way. Would we have carried your cross in his position? It doesn't matter, does it? Because you aren't here for us to face that challenge. But of course you're here, as you reminded us in this parable. You are here incarnate in our brother and sister in need. You are here as the homeless, the poor, the sick, the prisoner and the starving. We see you every day in our streets and on our televisions, crying out for our help, asking us to carry your cross. Can we be a Simon to you today? Blessed are those who show mercy. God will show mercy to them. Sing we of the Blessed Mother, who received the angel's word, and obedient to his summons, bore in love the infant Lord. Sing we of the joys of Mary, at whose breast that child was fed who is son of God eternal and the everlasting bread. Sing we too of Mary's sorrows, of the sword that pierced her through, when beneath the cross of Jesus, she his weight of suffering knew. Looked upon her son and saviour, reigning high on Calvary's tree, saw the price of man's redemption, paid to set the sinner free. In the scroll of the book, it is written that I should do your will. Your law is deep in my heart, O God. A reading from Isaiah chapter 6. I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? Who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. A meditation. I don't suppose we would be here at all if at the start Mary had not said yes that fateful day. I don't suppose Mary really understood what it was all about when she said yes to the angel, but she did say yes. And as events unfolded and strange things happened, she probably understood less rather than more as she pondered these things in her heart. And now she sees you being led out to death. 
In the normal run of things, sons see their mothers die. Found. Was this really what she has said yes to some 30 years earlier? But Mary remains faithful through it all and is still there when the others have fled. When we hear your call, we often make excuses. It isn't the right time. Someone else could do it better. We don't understand the implications. But when God's call comes to us, it is for us. And like Mary, we must say yes. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Blessed is she among women and blessed is the fruit of her womb. All who love and serve your city, all who bear its daily stress, all who cry for peace and justice, all who curse and all who bless, in your day of loss and sorrow, in your day of helpless strife, honour peace and love retreating, seek the Lord who is your life. How good and pleasant it is. Wherever people live as one. A scripture reading from Luke 19. As Jesus drew near and came in sight of Jerusalem, he shed tears over it and said, If you too had only recognised on this day the way to peace, but in fact it is hidden from your eyes. A meditation. You came to your city in triumphant procession, but as you drew near you wept over it, and well you still might. A city made holy for Jews by David and Solomon, a city made holy for Christians by yourself a sacred city, but also a city divided by fear, hatred and hostility. Why, Lord, can't these people live together in peace, respecting their differences rather than fighting over them? Why, Lord, can't we live together in peace in your church, respecting our differences rather than fighting over them? Blessed are those who weep. Every tear will be wiped away. Okay. Word incarnate, truth revealing, son of man on earth, power and majesty concealing by your humble birth. Yours the glory and the crown, the high renown, the eternal name. Suffering servant, scorned, ill-treated, victim, crucified. Death is through the cross defeated, sinners justified. They take what I wore. They stare at me and gloat. Make your own the mind of Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, did not count equality with God as something to be grasped, but he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, becoming as human beings are, and being in every way like a human being. He was humbler yet, even to accepting death, death on a cross. A meditation. It must have been incredibly humiliating, Lord, to be stripped in front of the gazing crowds to be exposed in your nakedness in front of these mocking and jeering people. We cling to our clothes more than just to cover our nakedness. They make a statement about us, that we have the latest fashion or designer label, or they are a uniform that gives us a status that we can hide behind. But in your eyes, we are all equal, whatever we look like, whatever we wear. And so we must be prepared to bear ourselves to others, to be seen for what we really are. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Father, I place into your hands the things I cannot do. Father, I place into your hands the things that I've been through. Father, I place into your hands the way that I should go. For I know I always can trust you. They divide my clothing among them. They roll dice for my robe. A reading from Matthew. Jesus said, do not worry about your life and what you are to eat, nor about your body and what you are to wear. Surely life is more than food and the body more than clothing. Set your hearts on his kingdom first and on God's saving justice and all these other things will be given you as well. As if it wasn't enough to have your clothes taken from you. The guards now dice, now throw dice to share them out. There are those who suggest that this is a way of living life, to make decisions by the throw of a dice 
or the toss of a coin. It saves them from having to think. It can make life easy, and we are all for an easy life sometimes. But life isn't easy. I don't recall you ever telling us it would be. You did tell us not to worry over material things. And some Christians see that the meaning, that this meaning, that once we have turned to you, everything in life will be rosy. But that wasn't what you were saying either. You were saying that we have to get our priorities right. And you should be our first priority, then others, and finally ourselves. Blessed are the lowly. They shall have the earth for their heritage. O oh Lord, all the world belongs to you, and you are always making all things new. What is wrong you forgive, and the new life you give is what's turning the world upside down. The world's only loving to its friends, but you have brought us love that never ends. Loving enemies too, and this loving with you is what's turning the world upside down. Precious in the eyes of the Lord. Is the death of the faithful. A reading from John chapter 15. Jesus said, if you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my father's commandments and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my own joy may be in you and your joy be complete. This is my commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. No one can have greater love than to lay down his life for his friends. A meditation. You taught us to love our neighbours, Lord. You taught us to love our enemies. You taught us to love even those who hate us. You taught us to forgive those who sin against us, even 77 times. And this is your reward for it all. Hanging there, dying on the cross. What love is this that you lay down your life for your friends? Blessed are the pure in heart. They shall see God. Come, my way, my truth, my life such a way as gives us breath, such a truth as ends all strife, such a life as conquers death. Come, my joy, my heart, my love, such a joy as none can move, such a joy as none can part, such a heart as joys in love. Your love is better than life. My heart thirsts for you. A reading from John. Jesus said, I still have many things to say to you, but they would be too much for you to bear now. However, when the spirit of truth comes, he will lead you to the complete truth, since he will not be speaking of his own accord, but will say only what he has been told, and he will reveal to you the things to come. A meditation. Lord, I don't suppose you've been given anything much to eat or drink since your arrest. It is no wonder you are thirsty hanging there on the cross in this heat. But of course, your thirst is not just physical. Your thirst is for the truth. Throughout your ministry, You tried to lead people to see this truth. This truth is that is important. This truth that will set us free. Some think we have got the truth, whether it be the scriptures or the councils of the church. But it isn't as simple as that. It is being revealed to us all the time and we must look for it strive for it. 
and we often don't find it because we prefer our certainty to your truth. Seeking the truth can be hard work and it can be divisive, but you did warn us it would be. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for what is right. They shall be satisfied. Now the green blade riseth from the buried grain, wheat that in dark earth many days has lain. Love lives again, that with the dead has been. Love is come again like wheat that springeth green. In the grave they laid him, love whom men had slain, thinking that never he would wake again, laid in the earth like grain that sleeps unseen. Love is come again, like wheat that springeth green. I will praise you, Lord, before all the people. For your love reaches heaven, your truth to the skies. A reading from Luke 12 and John 19. Jesus said, there is a baptism I must still receive, and what constraint I am under until it is completed. Jesus knew that everything had now been completed and said, it is fulfilled. And bowing his head, he gave up his spirit. And a meditation. Your cross stands bare and empty. The crowds have gone home. Another public execution over. Calvary, quiet. But what was that last word you spoke from the cross that only John recorded? Did he hear it clearly in his distress? Have we translated it right? It is finished seems hardly right, because, thankfully for us, it isn't. It is accomplished is perhaps better, but still seems a bit final. It is probably not strictly correct, but the old Vulgate perhaps captures the meaning in its rendering, it is consummated. Consummation completes the marriage covenant, without which it is neither legal nor valid and is open to annulment. But consummation is also only the beginning of the marital relationship. And so with your death on the cross, it was not the end, but the consummation of the covenant you made with us. Blessed are those who die in the Lord. They can rest forever since their good deeds go with them. Walking in a garden at the break of day, Mary asked the gardener where the body lay. But he turned towards her, smiled at her and said, Mary, spring is here to stay. Only death is dead. You will not abandon your faithful one to death. You will show me the path of life. A reading from John chapter 9. Joseph of Arimathea asked Pilate to let him remove the body of Jesus. Pilate gave permission. So they took the body of Jesus and bound it in linen cloths with the spices following the Jewish burial custom. At the place where he had been crucified, there was a garden, and in this garden, a new tomb in which no one had yet been buried, and they laid Jesus there. Very early on the first day of the week, Mary of Magdala came to the tomb. She saw that the stone had been moved away from the tomb. A meditation. Your mother held your body one last time. 
then gave it up to be laid to rest in the tomb that Joseph had kindly given. It was the custom to bury bodies quickly, but yours had to be done in even greater haste because of the Sabbath. They couldn't even complete the usual rituals. A funeral is always a sad time, and no doubt many tears were shed by those who laid you in the tomb that Friday afternoon. But as that ancient Russian hymn for the departed reminds us, even as we weep over the grave, our song must be Alleluia. Blessed are those who mourn. They shall be comforted.